All right, listen, so here's how we're gonna do things, yeah? We're gonna play out from the back. Focus on slow build-up play. I want you to do you know, did I leave the, the oven on this morning? I'm just, I'm thinking, point, I swear I left Janine to... Right, has everyone got that, yeah? <clears throat> okay, yeah, no, sure. Uh... <clears throat> I mean, to be fair, look, listen, the ball boy was screaming for it. <laughs> Mate, I'm open. <laughs> Yo guys, it is your boy Niran here, and you are watching FTW. This, of course, is the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. What has been kicking off in the world this week? Well, it's been a big seven days in the world of film, with the BAFTA Awards taking place this week, and one performance from it went viral because of a rap from actress Ariana DeBose. The team works grand. Good luck to you, Katie Brand. Electric Maladay. Marie, girl, what I'll be honest, I've heard better in the Nottingham Forest no dressing room. We're one year away from a further BAFTA travesty. Girl told me, take off your jacket. I said, babe. It makes me think, though, who's doing this at the Ballon d'Or? <laughs> Romelu Lukaku could easily hop on a beat from Timberland. Boots. Meanwhile, Erling Haaland's got pedigree. And in a week where Chris Brown's been on tour, Erling will want to hit all the right notes. Or in Chris Brown's case, just hit. On to the football, though, now. And over in the Champions League. That's it. I, this season's a lost cause. It's not even this week. It's the whole calendar year. Oh, wow, exceedingly exasperating. After taking a 2-0 lead at Anfield, Liverpool was smoked 5-2 in a round of 16 first leg by Real Madrid. <laughs> Darwin Nunez opened the scoring beautifully, followed by a Mo Salah second, only for Real to go crazy. With braces from Vinicius Jr. and Karim Benzema, plus another from Eder Militao. Before the game, and Liverpool fans let off fireworks outside Real's hotel. This never works, lads. We've lost, and now you're falling asleep at your desk at work. Colin, can we get the financial reports, please? Colin? Ah, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, flip it. Oxlade Chamberlain. So I went into this one with a score to settle again. At this point, you're not getting revenge, bro. It's time to stop. This is a Deji boxing level record at this point. Much like Deji, and there's no longer the dog in us. We've been smacked by a team that can't even spell comeback. Before kickoff, though, and spirits were still high. A lovely rendition of You'll Never Walk Alone, even if one fan had to find the lyrics. Here's that fan trying to keep up with the flow of the tune. Hey, hey, Jurgen Klopp gifted Carlo Ancelotti an e-cigarette, apparently. This man was at the Big Bang. Jurgen's trying to kill him. That's the only explanation. Here we have Angelotti's one remaining lung trying to deal with elf bar chemicals. He 100% gave it to Courtois because he was high for Liverpool's second goal. Danny Ceballos had to get a little comment in on Instagram reminding Tebow about the mistake. An awful mistake was then matched by Alisson smacking the ball off Anisius Jr. to level the scores. Loris Karius was at home realizing his foolishness had rubbed off on both of them no no this this whole thing all of this it's all about me into the second half though and this is where it falls apart a joe gomez disaster class ladies and gentlemen if i don't see this man at bournemouth next season fuck that if i don't see him at notting hill carnival next season he was paranoid checking his emails this morning Ooh, i tell you what i read that bad i thought i was gone darwin nunez is gonna be furious when he finds joe at full time meanwhile gomez and virgil van dyke were arguing over who performed worse and honestly it's a tough call no. who is the dog at this rate, Valt Faze is gonna be our player of the season for God's sake. Jurgen Klopp's had enough now. He's just creasing after each goal goes in. And at this point, so have I. This season is a complete wrap. To be fair, you know what actually thinking about? We're a mid-table Premier League side. Even to score two goals is great against Real Madrid, which is sick. Now in the Europa League, we had a Titanic clash in the first knockout round between Manchester United and Barcelona. We've had both legs happen since I recorded the last episode, and Manchester United made it through 4-3 on aggregate after a dramatic night at Old Trafford. Marcus Rashford was one man that the Catalan side really had to keep an eye on. After his incredible form, it's wild to think he's only seven Ballon d'Ors away from beating the record, but one man not quite involved in the goal scoring yet is Valt Weghorst, so Eric Ten Hag is just a manager, not a miracle worker. I, I'm not Harry Potter, so... <laughs> and it's, uh... This isn't just an opportunity for United to go through though it's an opportunity to offload some players they don't want though Barca weren't having it when they tried to offer them Scott McTominay at half time 
Meanwhile, at full time and with one United fan giving it large at the Camp Nou in the first leg, Armour struck him down pretty quickly. There was finally an opportunity for United fans to see long-term target Frankie de Jong play at Old Trafford for Barcelona. It became immediately apparent it wasn't going to be easy for Barcelona. Bruno Fernandes was determined to boot them out of Europe with Casemiro for once not sparking a scrap. I'm not getting involved. I'm here to enjoy myself, GC style. Do you know what I mean? But in the end, it would be Brazilian winger Anthony who grabbed the all-important goal with just 20 minutes to go to send the Red Devils through to the next round. Paul Scholes still wasn't convinced. I'm not even sure it's skill, is it? It's, I, I think it's, <laughs> it's, 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 I think it's his thing, Scott. Back in the Premier League and there was a massive turn in the title race as Arsenal took a dramatic late win versus Aston Villa thanks to an Emiliano Martinez own goal. Send that to your fucking friend! There's truly only a handful of wonders in the world. The pyramids, the Great Wall of China, Box Park, Shoreditch and beautiful Premier League football. Arsenal were getting smoked in the first half though by Felipe Coutinho, a man that Unai Emery forgot he even had at his disposal. William Saliba was a little bit distracted for Villa's first goal. Arsenal fans were watching and Ketia missed chance after chance and there was only one thing they wanted back. JESUS! Meanwhile, Mikel Arteta was fuming too, taking the piss out of the referee for a free kick. Paul Bukayo Saka knew the score. I think we'll all be terrible, but I'll be the best. But into the 93rd minute with the scores level and the ball drops to Jorginho. Setting up Jorginho! Oh! Two goals here last season, an immense goal here! An ex-Arsenal goalkeeper scoring an own goal thanks to extra time that he helped to create with constant time wasting is just vintage Premier League action. Now, unfortunately, Emmy's celebrations don't quite look the same. Tyrone Mings came over and gave him some stick whilst he was lying on the floor, though he did have to explain to the authorities that it wasn't on purpose after a mysterious Arsenal bribe. I have no knowledge of any of this. This is so... Bizarre. Right, the Gunners are going to have to give him a medal if they go on to win the Premier. Emi then went forward for a corner late on. It was cleared and Arsenal scored a fourth. Gabriel Martinelli was celebrating already. Wait, hang on a second. Meanwhile, the Forest ground and what seemed like a simple City victory turned into a late draw in Nottingham. Mate, based off these stats and if I'm City, I'm out of there. Forest and City fans were exchanging some great chants here with some sensational comedic value. <laughs> is poor from City. They were so wasteful in front of goal. Pep was not fully amused in Hooters at full time. I'm so happy, believe me. I'm so happy. Erling Haaland had his thoughts on seeing big Chris Wood come on late. <laughs> Mate, honestly, half of this Forest squad don't even know each other's name. You can't tell me that Kaylor Navas knows who Jack Colback is. For Pep, and it's looking like this title race might be a close shave. Maybe a little bit too close in his predicament. At Chelsea and life is continuing to look difficult for Graham Potter as his side lost 1-0 to bottom of the table Southampton. Graham's getting ready to put in another request to Todd Bowley after yet another defeat. I am once again asking for your financial support. Mate, if Roman Abramovich was still here, he'd be out in the wilderness by now. Now look, I know Bears like to attack, but have you actually tried playing it calmly along a wing-back system? Oh my god! Instead, he'll probably be given another three under-21 wonder kids to play with. One day, Chelsea will work out the correct answer to solving their problems. Two! Yeah, well, we know that's the one that you would choose as well, Ron. The players are starting to get fed up with the situation as well. Mikhailo Mudrik was benched. He turned up at Chelsea's training ground and wasn't pleased to see Graham still in a job. What brings you here, Potter? I could ask you the same. Enzo Fernandez was asked why he joined this shit show in the first place. At the end, we're playing this football because of money. Even though you have 10 million trophy, you can't use that to go and buy food in the supermarket. Meanwhile, when Mason Mount steps up for a crucial penalty to take to keep Graham Potter in a job, he knows what he's gonna do. Meanwhile, fans are voicing their concerns in a creative and concise way. Chelsea! 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 I'm convinced that Kai Havertz should be working for TFL. He says he's not a footballer. Although, to be fair, that would assume that he can actually strike properly, to be fair. Losing to Southampton is crazy. With their new signing Onuachu's first touch, there was also a scary injury to Cesar Azpilicueta in this one. He was knocked unconscious when Sekumara went for a bicycle kick and unfortunately connected with the Spaniard. That, though, was not going to distract the Chelsea players from a passing rondo. Now, over in France, there was an absolutely mental game taking place between PSG and Lille. 
result. The game tied at 3-3 into the 90th minute. Paris Saint-Germain earned themselves a free kick and up steps Lionel Messi. <laughs> The goalkeeper not getting a touch on the ball here, though the same can't be said for Lille's defenders. Get your hand off my penis! The weirdest thing in this one is that PSG sporting director Luis Campos came down onto the touchline to bark orders at his team. I don't think Leo was too pleased at being told to do a goal by a 64-year-old board member. Pussy or what? Say something! Imagine this in the Premier League. Right, so basically, Mason, we're gonna do a 4-4-3. But it did work though, taking the side from 3-2 down to 4-3 up. Elsewhere in the one though and Neymar picked up a nasty ankle injury. He could be out for some time with it. Wait, hang on a second. It's happened again. The Brazilian winger is out through injury once again at the time of year of his sister's birthday. This guy is literally a disappearing act anytime his team need him in the month of March. He's not even turning up at the team dinner, man. He's eating out somewhere else. Okay, that's actually great. I hate it here. Honestly, how can this keep happening? He's disappointed when he goes down injured, but then elated when he realizes there's cheeks to be clapped. He quite honestly has one thing on his mind at the family barbecue. In that position, I just have to smash it. Meanwhile, it's going to be very cagey when Canal Plus ask him why he's not back till the 12th of March. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. Look, listen, to be fair to him here, his ankle is in lowercase. He's not faking it. But come on, man. He's going to be his own son's uncle. Who do you think you are? With Neymar? Fuck no. Now, back in the Champions League, Manchester City only managed to draw in Germany versus RB Leipzig. Are we the farmers, lads? They had the better of the chances, but Josko Cavardio dunked on Diaz to secure a draw. Pep was immediately in, trying to sign RB Leipzig's entire squad before the second leg. Morning. How much is this? 149, sir. I've got 50p. Fuck you. He conducted a team talk on the pitch after the game. All the greats do it, it is fair to say. And he's currently over planning his 1-3-4-1-2 formation for the second leg. Down in the Europa League and there was an unfortunate own goal for Mitterlan to take them out of the competition. French side non are out at the hands of Juventus, but it was them using their hands in the first leg. How is this not a penalty, mate? RB Salzburg grabbed a late goal in the first leg against Roma and their manager did the Mourinho down the touchline celebration in front of Jose Mourinho. His interview after the game was a little bit awkward. So why wasn't it a special night tonight for you? And was your it what? Uh, not a special night for you. So why that? At Fiorentina, and I'm a big fan of the VAR confirmation celebration against Braga. Elsewhere, a PSV fan ran onto the pitch to punch Sevilla's goalkeeper, Marco Dimitrovic, who instantly managed to swing him to the floor. And French side Ren are now out of the competition. Loney Jed Spence wasn't too pleased with the cameraman getting up close and personal. <laughs> Back in the Premier League, and it wasn't all doom and gloom for Liverpool, who beat Newcastle 2-0. Nick Pope was sent off after a disastrous handball here, which rules him out of Newcastle's Carabao Cup final. With him suspended and Dubravka Cup tied, it means Loris Karius is their only eligible goalkeeper. I can't wait to see him try and play out from the back. Here we have Dubravka trying to convince how he's committed to the cause despite the United loan. I've been a fan of this great club all my life, and this is why I love Newcastle United. Casemiro will be excited seeing Loris in a cup final again. Meanwhile, one Newcastle fan is devastated after his dog ate his tickets. That must be a nightmare to try and explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. The dog ate all right. Whatever you say, Neil. In North London, and one young kid was filming himself doing kick-ups out on the street when Arsenal squad walked past him. Alexander Zinchenko challenged him to a Pana tournament and the Ukrainian lost. <laughs> Lovely heartwarming stuff there with the children of North London. Meanwhile, Tottenham's Christian Romero has a slightly different approach. Get it off the field! Joao Felix won goal of the month for Chelsea after being the only man to score in it. Meanwhile, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang isn't getting any game time. He's out signing foreheads. Mental, to be fair, that you can fit a signature on there. Although with Aubameyang's, you could probably fit a whole poem on there. Meanwhile, Eric Ten Hag and Sir Alex Ferguson went out for dinner this week. How cute is that? I'm assuming they were exchanging stories about Phil Jones. 
I'm gonna rate this one a seven. You what? The, the food. I, I'm rating it a seven. Uh, when when did we eat? For crying out loud, Alex, come on, man. From old to young, no, and Eric Ten Hag was asked to take a picture with a literal baby this week. Why is he holding it like a player of the month award? Ivan Tony was asked whether he was on his way to the bookies over on Instagram this week, to which he replied, no, I'm on my way to your mum's gaff. Harry Redknapp was linked with a sensational return to management in the form of the vacant Leeds job. I can't wait for him to sign Jermaine Defoe and Nico Crankia on debut. Upon being sacked as Southampton manager and Nathan Jones is back playing professional football. I was the fittest human being in history. Now, in shocking news over in France, and Steven Gerrard is a surprise candidate for the vacant PSG role. Here we have him describing his resume to the PSG board. Championship manager, completely, mate. You can't complete it. I got so good at it that the FA offered me a role in the England setup. Did they? I took Woking from the conference to the Champions League in six seasons. Stuff like that doesn't go unnoticed, Neil. I'll be honest with you, I don't think Kylian Mbappe is going to be too keen on him after three months of terrorism ball. Yeah, cool. But look, this is a great opportunity for Steven to really branch out away from British football management. And you know, he can go out and enjoy Parisian cuisine. This is only £5, chicken, bacon and chips. So nice, such a bargain and proper nice as well. Or even learn some of the French lingo. As I said yesterday, I make one tackle and all everybody speak about is this tackle nobody speaks about. Uh... Now staying in France and former Real Madrid coach and Ballon d'Or winner Zinedine Zidane is now an ambassador for Formula One team Alpine, a streamlined head for a streamlined car. One player over at Rennes has found an innovative way to get past the defender. In Germany and Bayern Munich suffered defeat at the hands of their bogey team Borussia Mönchengladbach. They tweeted about the fact that Bayern still couldn't beat them with an attached photo of Oliver Kahn looking frustrated from a game earlier on this season who of course is a board member at Bayern Munich. It's a shithousery award for Gladbach. Benjamin Pavard was trying to annoy Gladbach winger Patrick Herman, to which Patrick reminded the Frenchman of the scoreline. Meanwhile fans of both both Gladbach and Bayern Munich were challenged to watch the game in silence on TV and it led to some absolute chaos in the studio. <laughs> In Spain, an RM Castilla seemed to have a little bit of an unfair advantage with Marvel playing for them. Meanwhile, at Cadiz and their Indian Twitter account, they are once again pleading with a big team to play a weakened side against them so they can concentrate on European football. And over in Italy, Salernitana have sacked their boss for a second time in 31 days. You may remember the story of Salernitana's boss getting sacked and then them going back on that decision and reinstating him as manager. Well, it turns out they might as well have just stuck with the first answer because a month later and he's gone again. Now that it's time for your goals of the week, there's some more stunners this time. First of all, over at Norwich and a ball is dropping out of the sky with snow on it. That's not going to stop Marcelino Nunez striking a ball on the volley. Over in Colombia and we've got yet another volley of a different kind though at Bogota. At Palermo in Italy and we've got the customary halfway line goal going in here in Serie B. And finally, we've got a goal coming in from Paul Mullin of Wrexham. That on the face of it might not seem all that impressive, but I have never seen a finish like this. The ball getting caught under his feet, him turning round and flicking the ball over the goalkeeper whilst facing away from goal. Now, over in the Netherlands, and linking into a story which I'm sure you'll have heard about by now, but it's the unfortunate confirmation of the passing of Ghanaian winger Christian Atsu in the devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Now, obviously, the footballing world has been paying tribute to the former Newcastle, Everton and Chelsea man, who of course scored a free kick the day before he went missing. His former Ghanaian teammate Mohamed Kudus, whilst playing for Ajax, scored a free kick this week and an Eredivisie referee took the decision to not book him after he showed off a shirt reading R.I.P. Atsu. And in a game where the rules are so often followed to the letter of the law, this particular Dutch referee deserves a lot of credit for seeing that life and death is far more important than that. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> And that concludes 
the beautiful game. Now, up in Finland, and the weather conditions have been pretty extreme in the Finnish Cup. So much so that players themselves had to get rid of snow. It was stopping the referee from seeing the penalty area's lines this week. Over in Congo, and a women's side was so aggrieved by a refereeing decision that their players decided to chase the referee down. I'm not being funny, but they lost 5-1. It's hardly one decision that's lost them the game. It's not been a great week for officials over in Japan either. In Algeria, and ladies and gentlemen, get ready for one of the most chaotic clips you're gonna see, and easily the worst clearance of all time. Why are you even volleying it like that towards your own goal in the first place? Over in the Oceana Champions League and Vitongo from Tonga lost 9-0 to Lupe Olasiaga. And one of the goals they conceded was just as bad as what we've seen in Algeria. This one creating a lot of trouble. And the Vitongo player trying Meanwhile in Slovenia and it's the goalkeepers having a mare there It's alright to do the trick of hanging off your own crossbar As long as the ball doesn't end up underneath it Meanwhile in Brazil and fans are ever passionate about their football clubs They'll take so much attention to detail when it comes to making their banners Just a shame they don't take quite as much when it comes to positioning them properly Over in the MLS and I'm pretty sure I've seen this kit before Meanwhile in South Africa and one woman in the crowd clearly clearly isn't with who she's supposed to be with. She's either been bunking off work for four business weeks or she's cheating expeditiously. Now, closer to home and over at Sunderland, Luke Onian brought out the most blatant foul ever, but at the same time managed to get himself a piggyback ride. So who's the real winner? After going an incredible run without earning themselves a penalty, Bristol City were given their first since November 2021 this week, sparking a shocked response from their admin. Meanwhile, it was heartwarming stuff at Watford where Ken Semmer did his first interview for the club. You know, after a while now, you know, I have my, <laughs> had my injury and stuff, so, so like, yeah, um, I'm happy with the goals. I'm happy with the win today as well. Um, obviously, yeah, yeah, he had like a hurt on target on the keeper and then I was just there, you know. Uh. Now, he is someone who struggles with a stammer but was still brave enough to talk in front of the camera. I'm sure those that have a similar stammer or stutter to him will take a lot of positivity from him being bold enough to do that. Now that it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for because over in Romania, now I'll be totally honest, boys, we've had some really great stories from Romania in our in our time in this series but there might genuinely not be one that tops this. Now, over at Mayaveni, who are bottom of the league, they've clearly been struggling to attract fan numbers or attend attendances that they're happy with. So they have decided to start an initiative where they invite 25 convicted prisoners to fill the stands for their league games. I mean, if they're bottom of the league, the, the criminal activity is clearly happening out on the pitch. Mate, do this at Goodison Park. The prisoners will want to go back to jail. Over in Mexico, and Jose Dominguez had an explosive impact off the bench by getting himself sent off one minute after coming on in the 69th. Over in Poland, and we've got the miss of the week here, practically coming on the goal line. At Fortaleza, and they've announced the signing of Denzel Washington. Not the next move I thought the actor would take, but fair enough. Staying in Brazil and at Ita Perense, you've done so well to come out and sweep properly. Claim the ball before a striker can get in on it. Aye, e, 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 go, go, go. And then you do that. Like, what is the point? Remaining in Brazil again, and how about this for a bitch invasion? But we don't necessarily condone that around here, even though it's kind of entertaining. But this guy, give this Don a contract, the amount of stewards he's managed to evade here. And he does manage to at least meet up with the player that he wanted to. <laughs> Back in South Africa again and at Orlando Pirates, it's less about the football there, more about the skill, and honestly, just pissing about. In Wales, and shout out to Airbus, not a mode of transport, but they have booked themselves a one-way ticket to relegation on minus two points and without a win this season. Meanwhile, I think we've got to call the RSPCA for the next clip, because this mascot has just been smoked. Turns out Kurt Zuma's getting even more game time, boys. Now that it's time for still nil-nil and you guys know the score by now, this is a segment of the show where I bring to you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. Now, I'll be honest, ladies and gentlemen, we've got an absolutely criminal clip coming in here and it's all to do with violence. It starts off with a man being beaten and putting in a late, late, cynical challenge, which is gonna get his opponents annoyed. Turns out Karma is about to clean him out. <laughs> 
on to the weird stuff though now. Over at York versus Boreham Wood and play had to be physically stopped because a ball boy decided to steal all the towels that Boreham Wood were using to take their long throw-ins in the rain. Obviously these towels were being used to get grips so that the ball could be thrown further but one ball boy with a lot of initiative decided to just nab all of them and throw them to the fans. The throw-in taker refused to continue. All the towels had to be found and it led to this chanting coming from York City's supporters. <laughs> There's the absolutely ridiculous story going on at West Oak of Belgium, who have decided not to hire manager Stein Mitt, who was convicted of driving under the influence of drugs last year because one of the club's sponsors have objected. Yes, a sponsor of this club has enough power to veto this man being hired, I guess because it's, it looks bad for the brand. I completely hear that. The ironic thing is that the furniture supplier is literally called crack. You couldn't write the script, honestly. And finally, over in Nigeria, shooting stars football club have been fined half a million naira by the IMC because one of their club's officials was seen urinating in the centre circle before their game against Aqua United last Sunday. If you're gonna try and take a discreet leak, I feel like right in the middle of the football ground is not the greatest option because quite frankly, you're just taking the piss. But that is gonna wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media Media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.